Thank you, David. Um, like David said, um, my name is Adam Milligan. Um, I'm a civil transportation engineer with uh, SNC Lavalin. Um, one of my functions there is also the bin manager for our uh, Atlantic office. Um, I'm Vivek Tomar with SNC Lavalin as well. I'm a civil engineer, but uh, my primary responsibility there is uh, to do uh, business development. Um, one of the things the uh, Can BIM asked us to come and present presentate today is um, just some of the, the various projects that um, us in the Atlantic and um, SNC Lavalin as a whole has um, has been undertaking for the last um, five to ten years um, using BIM the BIM te latest BIM technologies. So let's see if this works. Yeah. So basically our theme is start to finish when are you using BIM. So just a little background on SNC Lavalin. Um, founded a, the corporation overall was founded in 1911, uh, provides engineering and construction on a world stage, uh, operates in over uh, 50 countries. Uh, as well, the key sectors uh, the, the uh, company operates in are, uh, as you can see there, infrastructure, mining metallurgy, oil and gas, and mining. So the key things the company is capable of providing are capital financing, engineering, procurement, construction, and operations and maintenance services. Uh, locally in Atlantic Canada, uh, we have over 200 employees, and we have office locations in Halifax, Antigonish, Mount Pearl, Newfoundland, and Cornerbrook, Newfoundland. Our, our scope of services in Atlantic is uh, full multidiscipline engineering, so civil, structural, mechanical and electrical. Uh, so from start to finish, one of the things that we do at the start of uh, most times when we engage our clients is help them concepts and marketing. So we've done a lot of a large few visualizations and modeling for our clients at concept stage to help prove the feasibility of their projects or to demonstrate to their, to their clients, their internal clients or their investors how a project can work. So one of the larger projects the corporation has been awarded is the Champlain Bridge project in Montreal. It's a design, build, finance, operate, and maintain for an overall value of $2.1 billion. It's a 3.4 kilometer long cable stay bridge and it includes many stakeholders. And this uh, video here just kind of demonstrates some of the ways of executing the project. And the video may run longer than I can talk. Probably skip through. Pardon? <laughs> Stats. <laughs> My only one was 3.4 kilometers. That's all I could find. <laughs> Let's get to the next one. Yeah. There we go. So another project we were involved in from at Concept was the Harbor Grace Industrial Marine Park in Newfoundland. Here, uh, the local community was trying to demonstrate that the location would be a perfect spot for a marine, a marine park. So we prepared some visualizations for them. And one of the key outcomes, one key concern from the uh, public was about light pollution coming from the lights that would be there. Uh, when they saw the video, they were actually, uh, the concerns went away quite quickly after they saw the, uh, the nighttime version of this video. Uh, as well, our client was able to use this for public relations and to actually use it towards uh, government support and government funding and approval. Uh, next was the uh, Bearhead, next Bearhead LNG project. And my notes just timed out on me here. <laughs> Yeah, and on, on this particular project, we were able to bring in the client's design, uh, as they had some of it in 3D and, and Revit. Uh, we were able to integrate the site topography that we were able to obtain, and we were able to model some of the uh, construction that was happening there. So uh, the intent, the execution plan here was really to build a lot of the large modules off-site, have them transported in uh, via barge, and then moved with heavy transporters. Um, 
There was also a concern about proximity to a local wind farm, as you can see there, and once we modeled everything, uh, the concern and risk was uh, not as, as great as they had perceived. And again, they also used this visualization to present to their investors. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So after we um, finished the marketing and we were sort of awarded the project, um, the next stage we go on to is um, reality capture. And um, so we, I know David and Chris are big advocates of this, um, the scan to BIM, which is um, something we're, we're very rapidly developing into. Um, the video you're seeing is a project we're currently working on with um, the University of Ottawa to scan uh, approximately 50 of their buildings. Um, this this one was a particular just a pilot project to kind of display the um, to show the university and give them a pilot of what they could what they actually receive out of this um, this kind of program. Um, just a few of the other um, projects that we're doing with the scan of BIM is um, scan the baggage handling area in the Montreal airport um, to uh, help with the renovations to existing conditions. Um, the McGill, <coughs> excuse me, the McGill Health Facility, um, as well as they're you know as they they're now planning to expand out uh, with the Shriners Wing. Um, they've also they also did the you know, floor flatness to make sure that all the floors were level for the specialized equipment that that the hospital needs. Uh, one of the other projects we're doing is um, we've fully scanned uh, Laurier House in uh, Ottawa, which is a turn of the century building. Um, they need to um, do some upgrades and um, renovations for uh, barrier free access. Um, the scan to BIM is really helping out some of the engineers who didn't get an opportunity to go to site. So the next phase in project execution is design. And I pushed the wrong button. Um, well, we can. Well, I guess we can move on. Um, one of the projects. Uh, this is a uh, for um, this project was a 12-story um, accommodation and dining mess facility for the um, uh, CFB Halifax down at the dockyard. You can uh, you can probably see this building actually right across the street from uh, the Irving Shipyard building going up right now. Um, this is a fully multi multidiscipline uh, uh, project done out of the Halifax office um, with um, the coordination of um, so architects and uh, interior designers who all worked in within Re Revit and the BIM environment as well. Um, this building is a modified, it was a modified design build, so um, uh, in cooperation with the contractors, I think they're at Palmer Low now. Um, this, uh, this building here was the first progressive collapse building in Canada, um, designed to the U.S. national uh, code, and um, we also incorporated the uh, force protection and anti-terrorist requirements into the BIM into the BIM models. So, ne so next is another major project executed by SNC Lavalin. and uh, Pomelo again was the constructor on this one. Is the uh, new Videotron in Quebec City. Uh, it was built for the eventual home of a future NHL team. Uh, the capacity is 18,000 seats and can do uh, an set for an NHL hockey team or high-level concert performances. Um, here the uh, construction packages were broken out into 27 separate packages just to allow for ease of bidding and to increase the competitiveness in the bids. Uh, the building's targeting lead silver. And, introduce, and to utilize some new technologies uh, to help keep the noise down that's generated by the ventilation system. Um, the next project is um, it's a hangar development project for um, CFB Trenton in uh, Ontario, just north of Toronto. Um, this was actually one of the first BIM projects that we had uh, started with in, uh, in Atlanta, Canada back in probably 2008. Um, it's a $350 million program to build four uh, aircraft and maintenance hangars for um, C-17 and C-130 uh, aircraft programs. Um, this actually, um, one of the, uh, the second hangar we designed was actually uh, the first certified gold hangar in Canada. Um, these were also done fully, uh, fully BIM, um, 
coordinated with teams from Halifax, Vancouver, and another team in Texas as well. So the next phase of the next skiing project is construction. And so one of the major, other one of the other major projects executed by SNC Lavalin in Montreal is the McGill uh, Glen site, uh, a brand new hospital. It's a PPP project with the province of Quebec. Uh, it was re it was awarded a gold award from the Canadian Council of Public Private Partnerships. It's a 154 bed pediatric facility and 346 adult rooms. Uh, the total site covers approximately seven football fields. Uh, this was a fully integrated BIM project, uh, utilized about 142 BIM users, 103 in architecture, 11 in structure, and 28 in MEP. Uh, the total drawings generated uh, to issue for construction was 5,971, and that project completion, including site instructions and uh, additional work during, done during construction, the total was 27,209. And uh, the, uh, just, a, just another statistic is the working files, I think per file were about seven gigabytes and the overall file sizes range uh, were up around 11 gigabytes. Um, the next project we're gonna talk about on this construction is the uh, St. Justine Hospital in uh, Montreal. Um, this one sort of came on to the back of the McGill Hospital. Um, it's the second largest pediatric uh, center in, Nova, in North America with uh, 275 beds. It's an expansion and uh, modernization to the existing building. Um, it's achieved a LEED Silver um, certification. Um, one of the, the big things about this one is the architecture and engineering team where their offices were on site with the contractors. So they were designing as they were building, uh, right in um, live designing as the contractor was building the, building the, the hospital. Um, some of the statistics about this one, there's, um, there's approximately 27 total models ranging in, in size up to about 10 gigabytes. Um, total users, about 46 users in this one. Um, this project, they, um, they went up to, they did um, expand it past the 3D, they went into 4D and 5D in the cost controlling and scheduling of the, the construction for this project. So next we just want to talk about some of the advantages that we, um, that we see with the use of BIM and what we've experienced in the uses of BIM over the last um, five to ten years. Um, so the base thing, biggest thing is the multidiscipline exchange uh, between, between disciplines. Um, there's shared parameters, um, exchanges between uh, disciplines and you know, live updating and dynamic updating of all the modeling. Um, so that you know that uh, the disciplines can collaborate between each other more than just you know you know your, your coordination meetings. They can collaborate every day on um, on how the models and how the updates are going for the models. Um, some of the benefits are the engineering calculations, load calculations for the structural engineers. We've worked with um, S frame and E tabs to uh, help integrate the structural analysis models back into the Revit models, as well as um, CFD and uh, flow calculations for the mechanical um, to help with ducting, duct sizes and um, HVAC calculations and lighting load calculations. We've worked with vendors for lighting, for light, with light, um, light vendors to help do load calculations to, um, to get lighting, <coughs> lighting calculations. Um, we've also done energy analysis models on the, using the Revit models to help, you know, get better efficiencies out of the, out of the buildings. Um, That's using eQuest, using e eQuest and sorry, the HAP. And the HAP, yeah. Um, as well, we've seen the advantages into pushing into the 4D and the 5D, the scheduling, cost estimating, estimating right? um, real-time updating and dynamic updating of your scheduling, your project monitoring, as well as your budgeting and cost estimating and quantity takeoffs as well from the, from the model. Um, as well, we're seeing um, a big push into the facilities management and pushing the models even further uh, past the design, design life of of, you know, from, from a consulting engineer, are, are, 
our life usually ends at once the building is built and then moves on to facilities management, but we're seeing a real push with a lot of um, owners to push into building models that are facilities management ready. Yeah, and so our O&M group is actually pushing towards uh, translation and starting to develop a, a towards codebook, which seems to be the industry standard right now. Um, so one of the big things, you know, from the advantages, and we've we've got a, um, a quote from our one of our one of the hangar programs is we actually the I guess is the realized advantages of BIM D and D they monitor the um, extras average they average out the extras the ex average expected extras on projects nationally and they expect about a 10% overage on a, on any given project. And with the use of BIM, we're actually able to reduce that overage by 30%. And uh, for that particular project, it ended up being a $3.4 million savings to the Crown. Um, so one of the other things that the company is doing, which we don't have a whole lot of inter um, knowledge about, we're trying to uh, figure out what they're doing, is uh, this 3D uh, immersive technology. So what they're they're actually using the BIM models to build 3D simulators to actually train the operators in how to operate and how to maintain the facilities. What is it? So start to finish using BIM. <laughs> Question. Fun. It's not let them off easy. <laughs> I was hoping to. Yeah, there you go. No questions? All right, they're going to be here for the rest of the day. So, oh, Arnold's got a question. Uh, some, a question on the from going from the, the model to operation and maintenance, what tools, because you need a user interface for the technical employees to use those tools, so what interface technology is required to take the BIM model into a qualified trade to actually manipulate the model? I'm from a, from understand from a facility management side? Exactly, yeah. yes. Um, from what I know, we, we haven't worked on it ourselves personally, but it's our operations maintenance group, and, and all I can really say is, is um, they're starting to build, I think, the libraries. They're starting to take the information out of the BIM model, starting to build the data management and libraries to be able to put it into the to whatever program that the operators or building operators are using. So if they're using Maximo, it's just a Maximo interface? Yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's Codebook. It's, it's, from what I understand, it's Codebook is the tool that they're using to get it over to Maximo. Okay, all right, thank you. <clears throat>